Hello everybody, welcome to my guide here on using video input for stable diffusion with masking. So if you haven't watched my other guide or if you um, don't know how to make videos using an input video, I suggest first you kind of learn to do that and then this will be something that you can use to kind of control better your output. And so I'm, I'm making a few different ones here just to kind of show you. So the first thing you want to do though, once you have your video, is you want to resize it to something square. So this is the original video and you can see it's kind of tall. So what I did was I just cropped it. So if you can't crop it, like say this, everything I wanted needed to be in there, then what you can do is resize it to square, which will mess up the aspect ratio and render it in the stable diffusion notebook with the the um, square one instead of the long one and then when you go outside of it and you get your file then you can revert it back to its ori original size and aspect ratio so the problem with that though is then it'll kind of mess up the aspect ratio from what stable diffusion did so if you can go ahead and crop it but um, you can just resize it if it doesn't make that much of a difference or whatever so you see this one what I did this is just a hand on a black screen so really this would be one you were, wouldn't really have to do too much to. You know, you really wouldn't need to make a mask that much because there's already kind of a very high contrast there in the areas. It's kind of a green screen. But these kind of videos are great for making masks. So what a mask is, it's basically just a black and white video that you will use in combination of your regular video. And that will tell Stable Diffusion where to generate the images for the video. So it, like in this example, it's only going to change black part it's going to leave all the white parts alone and if you notice too this is really sharp contrast this is solid black solid white so the shades of gray like in this one it will do the same thing but just to a slightly lesser effect so i'm just kind of this tutorial mainly is just going to show you how to use mask videos and what they do i'm not going to get into a whole lot of making um, really fancy masks you know with a whole bunch of tracking and everything but that is definitely something that will help a lot depending on your video. So that that's gonna be something you can spend, you could spend a really long time making a good mask for your video. You know, like if you just want it around somebody's head and maybe another part of the frame, you know. So this is just gonna show you how the masking works and how to make the video. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna upload these. You wanna upload these to your Google Drive because then you can access them whenever you want. If you just load them to the session, upload them to the session, then it's going to delete them after the session's done. So I would suggest doing that first. And so let's go ahead and get started. I'll go in the notebook now. Okay, and I've got the notebook open here. And one of the things I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start with a completely fresh copy of the notebook for these tutorials. So I'll download the latest updated version each time I do one of these now. So I've never used this. I just made a copy of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and go down the list here and run everything. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to change is I notice they have a new model in here, which is cool. I haven't tried this yet, but I'll get to this soon. I'm, I'm doing um, a video guide here on models pretty soon, how to use custom ones. And I'm also going to upload a custom model for everybody, um, probably a vampire model. But what I'm going to do for now, I'm just going to go ahead and change this checkpoint. I'm just going to show you everything I'm changing from the default, because like I said, this is a new notebook. So I'm just going to start it from scratch like you would if you got a new notebook so first thing i'm going to do is just change it down here to the one five and so the first thing i'm going to do here is change it to video input and then this is a default math statement here i'm just going to put this down to zero for now which i don't think actually this isn't really going to matter for the video input it doesn't use the, the movement keys but i'm just going to put that there just because i'm not going to be using it and then what we want to do here is go down here to the video input. And like I said, most of these settings aren't going to matter with video input. Um, I think like noise might, but the strength is actually down in a different section. So I'll show you that when we get there. And I'm going to first open up all of my videos here that I've uploaded to Google. Okay, and I'm just going to start off with just that hand image I showed you. I'm just going to put the hand source, that's the file that I changed there, to a square image. And I'm going to put that right here. And again, I have a tutorial on making videos that I suggest you watch, but I'll kind of go over this stuff while I'm doing it too. 
So the extract nth frame, that with a one, that means it's going to take every frame in the original video. If you want to short it up a bit, you can put it to two, then it'll only render every other frame, so that'll speed up your rendering time, but it will also give you less FPS for your final product. And then what I'm going to do is hit this, use mask video, and then I'm just going to use this one and put that there. And I'll go ahead and show you these two videos again that I'm using right now. So this is the source one, which is just this, the full color one. And then my hand mask black is this one. So this is just going to keep it to where it's just changing everything in the black, which background's already back, black, so it's not going to change that black background. So like I said, this one is probably not one you would normally do, but I'm just kind of showing you how it works here. And then I do have an idea actually for that hand. So the next thing I'm going to do is we want to enter our prompts into the animation prompts. And I'm just going to do something like this for this one. And then for now, I'm just going to take away all these keyframe changes. Now, this is another important part. Let me see. I'm going to change this first real quick. So I'm just going to change this to this one just so it'll render a little faster. Now, the other thing you want to do on video input is you want to change the seed behavior. And I'm also going to just disable the prompts for now. So you want to put, anytime you're using an input video, you want to change seed behavior to fixed. And that will keep it going a little more consistent. Otherwise, it'd be morphing all the time. And let's see, 60, 50. We want to do about 80 steps. So anytime you're doing an input video, you want more steps than normal because it's going to use half of them as just the the image from each frame. So really what this is kind of doing, it's just like making an init image with every single frame of the video. That's kind of what video input is. So it's it's very similar to just using a starting image in that respect. Okay, and let me see here. I think that's about all that I am changing. I'm gonna change this batch name just to find it quicker later. Now this is the strength. This is where you adjust the strength. You don't check this. Just by changing the strength here, though, this will affect it. You don't use the strength in animation settings. You use it here. So I'm going to start with 0.6. And let's go ahead and run it here. Okay, our video has started here. And if you notice, it's right now generating 32 frames for each step. Even though I have that listed as 80 steps up here right there so this is because of the setting the strength so just to demonstrate that the higher your strength is the less steps it'll do because the higher your strength is it's using more of the input video so if I crank this up to 8 it's going to use the input video for the first 80 percent of it then for the last 20 percent of the image it's going to start using the prompt so that's what the strength does so I'll just demonstrate that really quick so we were getting 32 frames or 32 steps per frame and now with that strength setting on 8 it's going to render even less steps probably around 15 or so 10 or 15 I think okay yeah and if you notice now it's only rendering 15 steps for each image so you notice it's not changing as much so each time you adjust your strength setting you want to also coordinate that with your steps so a good a good minimum I think is around 30 you want at least about 30 steps per frame. But let's go ahead and I'll just let this run for a while. I probably won't do the whole video here, but I'll do most of it. Okay, and I'm just going to let this run for a little while. Now I also want to point one, one other thing you can do is if you want your video to match the color closer. Um, I didn't do this, but this is something you can do. You can put the color coherence to the video input. So that's probably something I should have done to demonstrate, but it doesn't really matter. I usually just use this one or this one, or I use video input if I want my video the output to still maintain the same colors of the original video so we'll come check on this in a little bit i'm probably not going to finish the whole thing because it's 500 frames but just enough to show you what this does okay and i'm going to stop it here because it's looking a little bit too much like the regular hand this is another reason why you should probably test it with a still image before you do it but 
I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to fix that as well. So if your video is looking too much like the starting video, because each video is going to be different, so you want to kind of tailor each video with its own settings. So what I'm going to do here is turn the strength down even more. Let's try um, 0.5. Now the other thing though, when you turn the strength down, it's also going to warp the um, rent the video a little more, or morph, I mean, it's going to morph the video a little more, so it won't stay as consistent from frame to frame. Okay, and that's starting to make it change a little more. If you notice, we're getting more of the metal look and the LED lights, etc. So if your video input, if the video you're getting is looking too much like your source video, then you want to just go up here and change that strength setting and put it down a bit there. So I'll just let this run for a little while longer here, maybe up to 100 frames or so. Okay, that ought to be enough. So I'm just going to stop it here and render the video. Okay, so if you notice, all the changes are staying right there in the hand. But for this video, since it's just a black background anyway, I'm not sure if that matters a whole lot. It would probably still stay pretty close to that. So let's go ahead now. I'm going to actually use this same mask, but I'm going to put a different video in here. So it'll still have the mask, the hand mask, and it'll just change that part. But um, I'm going to use a different video other than this one. Okay, so now I'm going to take this video, and I'll, I'll put them over on the side there and post it. I'll put, I'll put all the videos that I'm using while I'm making this. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to put it here in the video init path. And I'm going to go ahead and change the batch name too. A lot of times I'll change the batch name when I change the video just because all those files will still be in there. Okay, so let's see. Now I'm going to make it something different since it's not the hand anymore. Well, it's going to be the shape of a hand. I'm just going to put something in here. This is mainly just to kind of show you how the mask works and what it does a little better. So I'm just going to put... Something that doesn't really go with the ocean at all. I'm going to put a city in there. Okay, and then you want to run it. Every time you change something, you want to run it so it takes effect. Run the prompt there, and then we'll do our next one here. Okay, and I think this one has gone far enough for us to take a look at it here. So again, for this mask, the black part was in the hand, so it's going to be changing everything that was within that hand video. Okay, and there it is. You can see it looks kind of strange. I'm not really trying to do something cool here. I'm just kind of showing you guys how this works. You can still kind of make out the hand there, but if you didn't know that was a hand, you probably would have no idea what that mask is. So you can really do some kind of cool stuff with this. This looks kind of weird because the city is so small there on the beach. And if you notice too, it's morphing quite a bit. That's because of that strength setting. So I probably could have put that up a bit for this one. But now I'm going to show you um, the opposite mask. So this one's going to render everything outside the hand. So a lot of times I'll make two masks when I make a mask, just in case I like one of them better. So I'm going to change this to the hand mask white. Okay, so I'm going to render this one now. And again, this one will be generating images, everything outside that hand area, because I made this one the hand white and everything else black. Okay, so if you notice now, we got a lot more of the screen changed because of how that mask is. So now everything down here and up above here will be the city, and the hand will stay the same as the video. Okay, I think that's enough here to get the general idea. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this and render the video. Okay, and there we go. And that actually looks kind of cool, kind of strange. But my goal here, too, is not to make something really cool. That's why I intentionally kind of do stuff when I make these videos that I haven't done before. So any mistakes that happen, I can kind of show you how to correct them, things like that. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Let me, um, just to show you too, how I'm going to see if we can kind of pronounce that mask a little better. Okay, so for this, I just changed out the source video and the mask video. If you can see, it's just like a window on a boat. And the idea here is just to keep the window, but then kind of change everything around the outside of the window. So you could basically take a video and then change, you know, your boat ride into maybe a ride on a spaceship. Or in this case, I just put kind of steampunk panels around the outside of the window. So this is kind of just demonstrating a more practical use for masks, which I haven't done so far. I've just been kind of showing you how to work. So this will be the final one here. So I'm going to go ahead and let this one start running here, and we'll see how this one here turns out. Okay, it's rendering now, and if you notice now, it's kind of getting the idea that I had in mind for it. And since this was kind of gray down here instead of solid white, we might see a little bit of changes here in the window down here in these gray areas. 
but again not as much as if it was solid black okay and there you have it here is our final video so if you notice the window is staying pretty much unchanged and everything around it though is changing so this is how you use the mask video so you can really get kind of complex with these masks and i'm going to do a tutorial on that as well in the future probably using um, adobe after effects but this really lets you control making input videos a lot more than you normally would because you can keep part of the video completely unchanged so um, i haven't made a video for a little while i've been working a lot of overtime lately but that's kind of come to an end so i'm going to be putting out a lot more so my next few, I'm going to do one on that hybrid video. I'm still kind of experimenting with that. And I'm also going to do one on custom models, using custom models. And I'll also have a custom model that I'm going to give you for download. And so I'll kind of um, show that custom model when I do that. And I've, like I said, I've got, I'm a little behind now, but I've got a lot of stuff I'm going to be doing in the future. So thank you for watching, and I will be back soon. Everyone have a great rest of your day.